Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Mac Break Dev, and I'm here again with Sal. Pleasure as always. Sal Segoyan, good to have you back. Always good to be here. And what are we talking about in the world of automation today? Something that everybody deals with, but nobody knows how to do, and they get frustrated and give up. But it can be done easily. There's a lot of things that fit into this. <laughs> so a lot of things fit in that category. <laughs> so this one's going to be about disk images. Okay. Now, one of the real powerful things about the Mac OS is we have this certain kind of file format called uh, a disk image, a .gmg, and it is a clickable file that turns into a hard drive mounted on your desktop. And it looks pretty swanky. And they can look pretty you, you swanky. Look, you look pro if you can put it together. You don't have to just send someone a file. You don't. It's not just a zip. Right. Right. But how do you make one? Right. A lot of people don't know how to make one. Uh, you have to use the disk utility, and there's a whole process you have to go through with it. But we can create an automated workflow that really does make it simple. You can just select things on your, on your desktop and turn them into a disk image automatically, and you can control the look and feel of the disk image as well. Want to know how? Where do we start? Automator. Of course. So the first thing we're going to do is go over here, and we're going to launch Automator. Our favorite robot, Auto the Automator. And we're going to create a simple workflow right. that we're going to save as a Finder plugin mm -hmm. so that we can get things selected in the Finder. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with files and folders, and we're going to uh, get the selected items. So I'll just say get, so, oh, there it is. Hit the return key, it selects that action. So whatever you've, whatever you've just grabbed onto, this, this just says, Look yeah. at what, what's get get whatever you have it selected. Okay. Hit it, hit the return key again. It adds it to our workflow. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is get whatever the, you have selected in the finder. The result of this action passes it to the next one, which is making a new disk image. Okay. So we're going to just type in the word disk image, and right here, new disk image. Right. This action creates a new disk image. Yeah, it's exactly what we want. Now you can see that uh, this action has a little bit of uh, parameters to it. You can, right. you know, what's the volume name? Uh, what do you want to save the uh, the file as? What kind of size do you want for the disk image? Do you want to encrypt it? Where are you going to put it? Uh, do you want to leave it mounted and return the image volume to the ne next item in the workflow, or right. unmount it and return the image file to the uh, to the next item in the workflow? We'll just leave it like that, but. We don't want to come up with one disk image format that's always going to work. We want to be able to have it flexible so that we right. can change it as we need. And one of the nice things about Automator is you have this option here to show this action when the workflow is run. And what it will do is this, otherwise it just kind of runs in the background, right? Yeah. Right. And it will stop and show this bit of UI and we can input what we need at that particular moment. Because we always want to name the disk image something different. We don't want to name it the same thing every time. Right. So as a placeholder, I'm just going to type in the word untitled. Untitled. And do the same for the disk image file. And just leave everything else as the default. Okay. Now, this part, this workflow as it is, will create a disk image. Right. But we want to go one step more. You notice how some disk images have a nice look to them when mm -hmm. you open them up. They have a certain style. The icons are a certain color. The background's a certain color. Right. Well, we can do the same using an automator action for the finder that will allow us to set the, the views of a folder. So if I just type folder and start view, you can see that there's an action called set folder views. We'll install that, and then we can pick the view for our, our particular uh, uh, folder that we want. We'll leave it icon view, set the icon big. Let's give it a color background. Uh, let's make the background like a gray color, let's see, like black. But then let's adjust it so that it's like more of a gray like that, something neutral, okay. 
And then some of the other parameters and over here. And this picture over here, that's when you see those really big pictures that are in the, yeah. in the, in the folder. So yeah. you really wanted to make it look like something specific there. Exactly. So we're going to show the status bar, uh, no, don't show the toolbar, set the sidebar width, and just basically leave it like that. And then the final thing is, is we want to see the, uh, the new disk image opened up when we're done running the workflow. Right. So that'll be an open command, open finder items. We'll add that in, use the default application. So again, it's grabbing whatever you have selected and just keeps on passing it. Yeah, let's, let's walk our workflow and see what it does. Right. So the first action is get, get what you have selected, right. pass references to those to the next action right. in the and workflow. References are just the information. Where is it on the drive? Yeah. What yeah. is it? This file at this location, here it is. Right. And it passes a list of those to the next action in the workflow, which is new disk image. Right. New disk image takes those as input and says, okay, I'm going to show you some UI because we selected show when run. Right. You pick the buttons and how you want to name this. Okay, fine. Take, create a new disk image, put all these guys into it, right. and then set its view right. to the way you want it to look and then mount it and show it to you. To make sure you got what you expected. Exactly. Okay. So that's basically our workflow. Now we'll go over to the file menu where choose save as plugin. We're going to save this as a plugin to the Finder application right here. You now you can save oh, wow. plugins as a variety of formats. You can save it as a folder action so that it runs when something's dragged into a folder. So you could literally have this set up so that you can just drag a bunch of files onto it and it would just pop out a, it would sure. pop out a, a disk image. Yeah. You drop them in a folder, you get a disk image. Right. You have an uh, alarm, so we just wake up at 5 o'clock. You can have an iCal <laughs> alarm so that it runs at a certain time. <laughs> an image capture, so when a camera's connected. A print workflow, when you print the PDF, your workflow runs. And, right. Or just save it at the script menu. In this particular case, we'll use a Finder plug-in. Okay. And we'll call it uh, New Disk Image from Selection. That's kind of informative, right? Yeah. Save that. And now... One of the things, uh, parameters about the disk image is you want to be able to adjust its size. You don't want to make a disk image too big, you don't want to make it too small. So I have uh, three movies here. I have a group, a folder of media here, but there's three movies I want to actually create and put on a disk image. Right. Now, I want to find out how big they are. How much is the combined size? Do you know how to do that? I would do Command I. Command I for each one of them. If you go Command I, you'll get three separate windows. Right. Here's a little tip. Do Command Option I, and you get ah, a single multiple info window. That's cool. And here you can see that the combined there are 58 megabytes. So all I need to do is create a disk image that's about a bigger than 58, right. and then I'll be fine. So I, with those selected, I uh, right click on it to bring up the mm -hmm. contextual menu. Go More Automator New Disk Image from Selection. And you'll see the workflow run. And here's the UI. Uh, I'll call this Hubble Movies for the disk name. And I'll also call the file Hubble Movies, too, as well. Let's make our disk image 100 megabytes. That should hold the 58 or 59 megabytes. Now, if you megabytes. did the size size to fit, would that make it exactly the size? Yeah, but then you can't control the look and feel. Right. It just goes you know, exactly shrink wrap to what you need. Exactly. It's worth doing this extra step of so figuring it out extra. to get the look and feel that you want. You exactly. go continue, put it on the desktop, leave it mounted and return the image volume to the, the workflow, click continue. You can see now it's made the, uh, the disk image, it's mounted it, and here it is. It is and you can see the array. previews are coming in. So now when I size this to what I want, when I close that window, it will remember just the way it looks right now. So here's a workflow, select something in the finder, instantly turn it into uh, its own disk image. Didn't affect any of the things that were selected. And it's, it's a lot easier than going through the, through the application process. Yeah, it's Instead a lot easier. utility or whatever, building all this, because it's, it's it, it, there's all this stuff to do, and, and all you have to do is just right click on it now. Right, and when you hand that to somebody else, it looks the same way on their computer too. Fantastic. Thanks, Sal. Thank you. And thank you for watching Mac Break Dev.